Sacred Space the podcast has been recorded on Gubby Gubby Country. Myself and guests acknowledge and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Sacred Space, the podcast. I am Tanika, your host, and this is a space for you to tune in and become educated, evolved, and expanded on all things generational healing, personal development, and spirituality. This is a space where I'll get beautiful, like-minded guests on to speak into their stories and their wisdom, as well as hearing mine. So take a big, deep breath into your belly, get anchored, get grounded, and let's get into this week's episode. Hello, my love, and welcome back to the podcast. This week, I have a bonus episode for you where I was actually interviewed on a different podcast by Coached by Coco on the fucking vibe. That's her podcast. Um, And this conversation, I just think is super cool, super multifaceted, if you will. We go into standards, we go into shadows, we go into the menstrual cycle and how to work with your menstrual cycle. But we also speak about nervous system regulation, clearing your energy, choosing the right coach for you. Like we really take this conversation in all different directions, but it's tied in a perfect little bow. And if you're looking for a motivational, insightful conversation between two chicks, this is exactly the podcast for you. So let's get into this episode, shall we? Right, guys, welcome back to the On The Fucking Vibe podcast. Hope you have been having a beautiful day, week, night, whenever you're listening to this. And thank you so much for tuning into another week of the pod. Today we have a very special guest joining us for our first guest episode of the year, which is very special, and I'll get her to jump on and introduce herself. Hello. Oh my God. Firstly, I want to say the name of your podcast is like so good. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm you. I'm Tanika. I am, I would call myself like a menstrual cycle coach almost. I work with the energetics of our menstrual cycle and align women like holistically from through a various different modalities and different ways um, to like living in alignment with your higher purpose through your menstrual cycle, which I think is super cool. Um, I'm in Australia on the Sunshine Coast and yeah, that's me. <laughs> Amazing. And we recorded a podcast for her podcast end of last year, which I think will be out at the, at the start of 2024. And we just had the best conversation, went so many different <laughs> ways. And I was like, girl, you've got to come. You've got to come on the pod. Literally, the opening conversation. I was like, when I was like listening back to it, I was like, holy shit, we covered <laughs> so much. <laughs> so much. And so much good. And like, I think it was it was such a cool opportunity to, like, just to go into what we spoke about about applying the the tools in which like mind body and soul relate to feminine energetics masculine and feminine energy how to support yourself structures flow all of those good things so definitely go and check that out and I'll pop all the links in the show notes as well and to open up all of my guest episodes 2024 new year but same question what is on the fucking vibe for you this week Oh, I didn't even know what this question was going to be. So I was like excited. What is on the fucking (laughs) vibe for me this week? Um, So I have a home gym and actually last night I was up really late, just like rearranging it completely, like by myself, Mm. like, you know, those like massive big machines that have like all like the, the pull downs and everything on them. Yeah. I'm down there last night all on my own, like moving it all around, like fully in that masculine energy. And I feel like that's what's on the fucking vibe this week because I'm just Mm. like, fully here for just like getting fully back into like gym and just like moving my body and like lifting heavy weights and feeling really strong so I'd say that's what's on the vibe for me <laughs> love that love yeah and I feel like there's it's gonna be cool to talk to you about this as well I feel like 2023 was very much the year that I led my fitness and my movement very intuitively towards healing and, and like restoring my nervous system rather than so much as like to what I want, thought I had to do from like a, a fitness lens or from like doing yoga. And and it was really cool to see like, okay, cool. I'm in a season where I want to like get into my mess and where this healthy stress on my body of like lifting heavy weights was so powerful for me to like really anchor into that. And then there was a season where I, ha- I like had to, but also like consciously chose to that my nervous system was so cooked as to things that were happening in my life. I was like, this actually is not going to serve me the way I'm moving my body. And that was like, it's a very personal choice, but it was cool. It was cool. It was definitely a a cool experiment to see like what came from that and how balanced I felt after, but love that 2024 energy. And I feel like it, it 
<laughs> always comes back to that like that intuitive nudge that your body gives you, right? Like our body always knows. And I think that's like one reason why I got so like hooked on working with the menstrual cycle and like always like leading everything back to it because I'm like literally even through our cycle as women, right? Like when we're on our bleed time, like our period, like we don't even have like the hormones running through our body to be like lifting heavy, but then we're like so conditioned to like do all the things like everyone else. But I think that's really cool how you're just like, I just didn't feel like it. And like, that's just so perfect. And sometimes that is like, we just go through seasons in life where it's like, Mm. cool, I'm just going to do yoga or cool. I'm just going to do this. And it's like, we don't have to shame ourselves about that. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. And I think that's the the number one thing, like the lowest frequency emotion vibe that we can have in our life is shame. And and shame is always going to come up when we, most often it comes up when we're in resistance to what we intuitively know to be true and we do the opposite or we do it but we still feel the shame coming up from you know we're still doing the thing but we still have these shameful emotions like oh like I'm I'm doing it but I'm not actually like really embodying and Mm. being convicted in my truth behind my actions Mm. and yeah that definitely came up for me when I was like okay I'm gonna quit the gym for three months and like just go into like full restorative yoga and like really work on the somatics behind like regulation of nervous system and using movement to do that but at the end of the day it's like it's your body you know what's good for you and if you know that actually what's good for you is to weight train all of the time regardless of how you feel regardless of like your nervous system like and actually that's going to serve you really well and it's building your consistency your self-trust in another area and it's worth it to you then power to you do that it's like what's worth it is it worth building that consistency in that area or is it worth it to you to listen to your intuitive nudge and like be more free flow in your movement like both are perfect but be convicted and actually know that your decision the way that you're choosing to move everything in your life but the way that you're choosing to move is coming from your authentic truth not because a conditioned way that you think you need to be yeah and I think that's like it's really cool when you like stick to things like that or like you know, like you said, it could be any area in life. It could be like the way you're eating or like your social life or like the way that you're showing yourself love, whatever it is. But I think it's also really cool just to like add on to that is just like noticing where you're moving from like other people's projections versus not your intuition. And like mm. a really cool way to actually know the difference there is by taking time to balance your nervous system every day because you're like checking in with your own energy. And I'm sure you've probably spoken about this because you're like so on like that's your vibe. But like you know, I think it's just so important for people to be like checking in with their energy, checking in, balancing their nervous system like once a day at least, because then you know you are moving from like your truth, your authenticity, not like a projection from like a work colleague who's saying like you should be doing this to feel good or like your mom or like your partner, like whoever it could be that's like, you know, instilling these beliefs into you. Um, I think it's like mm. really cool to like just have that discernment as well. Yeah, 100%. And like, I speak to connecting like daily self connection from the place of like connecting to your own energy and like actually, you know, like tapping into your truth, like checking in, what do you need? Like, how can I support myself today? But how you spoke to it from the lens of like, if you don't provide that time for you to check in with yourself, to actually connect with your own energy daily, then yeah, you are a lot more easily swayed by the projections or just the, the way in which you think you need to be by other people. You don't operate, you don't like move through your day from a place of like, okay, cool. I, I know I can come back to that chicken. Oh, I know I, I can come back to the anchor that I gave myself at the start of the day or whenever. But there's if there's no anchor there, like what brings you back to your truth? What brings you back to leading from your own energy? It's so yeah. much easier to get caught up in what someone else says and then go, oh, yep, that's right. And that's how I'm going to move. Mm. I think like I just got this like little visual come through and I think this would be like a really cool way for people to like sort of understand as like what we are saying as well it's like imagine that like you have like a bowl of water and like when you check in with your own energy the water is clear it's pure it's sparkling it's like you know just clear water but Mm. you're moving through your day and like every moment that you go through like this person's like projection or like comment or belief is like purple so then there's a drop of purple in your water then this person's is blue then there's a drop of blue then this person's is red like going on and on through your day right you get to the end of the day and the water's brown because like when all the colors are mixed it goes disgusting and if you're not checking in with your own energy and clearing all of those colors out of the water you're moving through your life with this brown murky 
energy, you know, like not mm. knowing what's yours, not knowing who, whose is whose. And it's feeling confusing, confusing. It's feeling overwhelming. You're then probably going through that cycle of shame because you're like, why am I doing these things that don't feel good for me? But I'm telling myself they feel good for me, but they don't feel good for me. And like, you're going through all that stuff. Whereas if you just check in with that bowl of water that was, you know, just hypothetically speaking about and just clear away all the shit each and every day, it's going to be clear every day. And then you're going to feel clear every day. And you're going Mm. to have the clarity to like, know what actually does feel good for you moving through like the time of recording the new year. (laughs) Yeah. I love that analogy. And I think that's such a, that's such a perfect way of explaining like how like your own truth gets so diluted by other people's projections or their ways of being or their beliefs and actually being able to come back to clarity and like I talk to clarity quite a lot from the lens of like not from a space of you need to be so clear of like your action steps and like your 50,000 steps between you and your goals but like clarity comes from being clear and in tune with your own energy as long as you have that you have enough clarity to move one step at least and the more you build clarity you step you build self-trust you build clarity you take another step you build self-trust and after a while you just end up walking in the state of clarity and the steps the 50,000 steps between you and your big goal that you actually want to achieve become more apparent rather than going okay cool what are my 50,000 steps and then going like but who the fuck am I to do that And, and people come into the cycle of oh I want to do this okay, cool, but who do I need to be to actually do that thing and and move that that needle every single day of my life? It's checking in with your own energy and moving from a clear place. I can't believe we're having this conversation. Just like firstly, well, like all of it just feels so aligned with just like my personal life right now, particularly like as soon as we start talking about shame, I'm like, what are the odds of this? Like I actually, sorry, on the 1st of January made like a promise to myself um, that just for 31 days I'm, and I saw that you're actually an EFT practitioner, which I only just realized, but I've um, every single day been doing like EFT. That's been like such a pivotal thing on my journey, EFT tapping of just like supporting my nervous system. But literally, so it's, yeah, like today's day nine, but I've been doing like EFT tapping every day on working through shame that's like, you mm. know, held in my body. And I'm like, we start talking about this. Okay, angels, I get it. Like, this is a conversation for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the other part of the conversation we're having is I really noticed last year being a very like feminine year for me, very much of just like flowing through everything, saying I wanted to like get to a certain space. But really what was happening was I reached my goal And I didn't feel like I could go further because it's like, oh, I'm already living the dream, right? Like it's like I did, I just stopped Mm. like pursuing more because it was like, oh, I'm here. So I fell really into like that feminine flow energy of just like not having time scheduling, not kind of like, I was just kind of like, oh, intuitively today, I feel like recording a podcast episode. And then I feel like, oh, doing this. And then I've got a client, you know, I was very much in that energy. It's something I've been like implementing is, okay, my next goal, how am I going to reach this? And it's by like every day I have like this, I use Notion. If you like know what that is, it's like an online, like a note taking app. It's fucking mm. brilliant. Like I'm obsessed with it. Um, But I just have like to-do lists on there. And it's like every single day, like ticking off my like EFT, ticking off, making my bed, ticking off, like what else? Like posting on my stories for work or like whatever it could be. Like I've got like a bunch of random things on there. And it's not from the space of like, ticking something off to feel like accomplished of like, oh yeah, like I've got my to-do list ticked off. It's more like actually holding myself accountable that like each day I'm doing like all these things that I felt like I didn't have the capacity to do because I'm allowing like my masculine to actually hold that structure. And in Mm -hmm. turn, there's so much more flow and there's so much more like, yeah, like fluidity to like be in your feminine And Mm -hmm. yeah, I just think this conversation we're having is just so cool. And so many people face this stuff, right? Of like, oh, like how the fuck do I get to where I want to be? Like, this is my goal, Mm -hmm. but like all they have is their goal. And then it feels so unattainable, but there's so many different ways that you can sort of implement and like do it in your own way as well. Like that works for me, but like for other people, it could be different. Um, Yeah. To actually achieve them. Yeah. And I think it's so beautiful. Like so many things you've spoken to and like the, The first one being the tapping around shame and using EFT as a modality for bringing that into a regulated and a high frequency state. I had a very similar journey in December. I felt a lot of shame around 
an area in my life and I I ta- I think I did like two kind of like not intensive but just two very grounded tapping sessions really focusing on the shame I was feeling in my body and, and why and where it was coming from and bringing my body into a regulated state and EFT is it's like you waving a magic wand and I don't say that lightly like I I every single time I facilitate EFT like tapping for myself or for a client it's it's like watching magic unfold as to the person that walks into the session or the version of myself that starts that session and then how regulated and calm and connected to themselves their mind and their body they are afterwards yeah it's it's like watching magic unfold so totally. if you have had any inkling around emotional freedom technique EFT tapping like jump in my DMs I'd be so happy to to talk to you about that and answer any questions but also around yeah let yourself let yourself really figure out what is going to allow you to reach your goals mm-hmm. reaching goals and intentions and, and 2044 and new year energy and everything like there is so many ways into which you can reach your goals like yes like number one I think you and I can agree clarity of like yourself your own energy and actually checking into that is like non-negotiable like you have to have that to clearly see where you're going otherwise you're going to be walking through muddy water and you can't see fuck all but knowing that that is a way in which you can support yourself to move like finding Number one, like I, I literally recorded a reel on this this morning. So I'm like, perfect timing. But <laughs> number one thing with like that I believe is like so important when you're reaching, wanting to reach your goals is a willingness, a willingness to mm. actually do it. Like not just set the intention, not just to move, but a willingness to f- be fully integrated and fully embodied in that process so that when you reach your goals, you feel it. You didn't tap out. You didn't dissociate. You didn't use another ego coping mechanism to or reactivity mechanism to hold yourself back from actually enjoying the process Mm -hmm. and the willingness to fully immerse yourself and be present in the uncomfort in the growth and in the sometimes in the shit and and that will allow you in that duality to reach your goal and feel the state of elation of like wow I was fucking present in every single step I felt clear I felt good and the second one, like really anchoring is support. How can I support myself to be able to keep pushing the needles? Like, what is it in my own life that I need? Is it, is it regulation? Is it movement? Is it mindset work? Is it coaching? Is it reading? Like, what are the things that are actually going to support myself to connect to myself, but also help me push the needle as like the human I am? And then the people around me, like, what does that support look like? And is is that conducive to actually reaching my goal yeah yeah and another thing that like I have been like really coming into as well is like sometimes we and like because I'm just someone who which is something I'm like navigating is like I've always just been someone who it's like oh my god everyone is going to like believe in me the same way that I believe in them or like you know what I mean like really having that like oh my god like everyone's like a hype girl where sometimes that's just not the case that doesn't actually mean that the person who isn't the hype goal, isn't hyping you on. It's just a different energy, right? So like something I've mm-hmm. been coming into is very much like watch who you share your goals with. And my mentor actually like reflected this to me because I was, you know, in the space of like, well, why can't people hold me in like what I want? And then mm-hmm. that then in turn turned into like most of last year, me not striving for more because the people around me just were kind of like, you're 24, you've done all these things, like that's it. Like that's that's as far as you can go. But that's mm-hmm. because that's the limit that they're putting on themselves, right? So I think a really cool like thing for you to take away from this episode, like anyone listening, is like just watch who you do share your goals with because that was like the best piece of advice that my mentor has ever given me. And already I'm like, holy shit, like it's so fucking true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can only we can only truly like it doesn't mean that someone has to have the same goals or the same intentions or same way of being but it's the level as to which the person that you share your goals with allows themselves to dream what they see is their cap on their potential what is their ceiling of joy in their life are they miserable and you want to live a life of freedom of fun and happiness then like probably not the person to share your goals with of, of that yeah, exactly. of that caliber of the life that you want to live and yeah and it's it, it really is like not- an energy spending sorry I didn't mean to cut you off no you're fine (laughs) it's not about like 
you know, looking into your life and being like, oh, like my mom has only like done this and like my grandparents have only done this and my friends has only done this. It's not about like looking at everyone and shaming them for where they are. It's more like exactly what you just said of like who are the people in your life who you know have big dreams, who you know want to go do the things. They're the people you want to like share your dreams with because they're the people who are going to continue to like rise alongside you, push you to strive them, ask you why the fuck you're not showing up in the way you should be to reach those goals. Um, So yeah, it's not about like getting into a space of like, oh my God, I have to keep it all to myself. I can't share it with anyone in my life. Like no one's where I want to be. It's more, yeah, like looking at the energetics of like, well, you can kind of tell like this person's eating McDonald's every night and like feels really shit about their body. You're obviously not going to tell them that like you want to start training for bodybuilding. Like it's kind of just looking at it like from that lens. Yeah. And I think this is, it was a really cool process even around like you can take this to anything like goals or vulnerability or whatever it may be, but allow yourself to play with this. Have Hold this in your awareness as you start to play with who you share your goals, your vulnerability and your things with. And, and know that you are safe within yourself before you really like start to embark on this process. I think that's like number fucking one, you've got your own back and like take it to the levels to which you can feel that level of dysregulation but it's not going to like tip tip you over the edge so to say it's like use your discernment here but I feel like the most powerful thing I learned last year around sharing goals and being vulnerable was doing that and then realizing that that person actually like that person actually like wasn't safe to hold them and then knowing okay cool like the next time that's fine. It's just not to say that like you have to know that this person's going to be able to hold you because it sets up the expectation because sometimes they can't and mm. sometimes that's okay and that's actually okay. But allow yourself to play with it. Allow yourself to to anchor and to trust and, and to fully know, okay, this person like is 100% like not the person to hold me in this mm. and that's fine. But don't discount. It's a two-sided coin, hey, like don't discount that other that people can't hold you in your bigness as well. Because yeah. sometimes those conversations, those times you lean in with those relationships, they are the most incredible conversations and strengthen your relationships so much more deeply because they it's almost like you spark something with within them that you are able to share with them and they go, fuck, I've been thinking about the same thing. And in that vulnerability, you connect with that other person it strengthened and it also calls them forward. Yeah, like you're being the expander in that um, dynamic there and that in turn can actually, yeah, like you just said, strengthen the relationship and build more trust in in that relationship and in yourself and in, in themselves to actually see like sometimes people do need that like someone else holding the light for them to see like, oh, my God, I can step into that. So, yeah, I, I completely agree with that too. It's very much just ha- having that discernment around like mm. you know, and maybe not like going in with your like biggest audacious goal at the start of like I'm going to make like $100,000 yeah. this month in like business. Or, like that's what I'm aiming for, like cash months in business when it's like someone who's working a nine to five, like maybe go in from a different angle of like – um. I'm, I'm this year, I'm like, my goal is like financial freedom to be able to travel, you know, like there's, I think there's just like different textures to like how you can also, mm. them so that yeah, you love can that. almost see how you will be held in it. And something that was like coming to me as you were speaking into that is something I heard on like a master class or course thing that I did and I can't fully remember it. So I'm going to butcher it, but it's something like, um, if you do something and it works, it's just like solidifying, like who you are, it's like solidifying that like that person's right for you or like that situation's right for you. If you do something and you fail, it's literally just showing you where there's like a lesson or like where you can learn more and like lean into that to like grow. I literally can't remember whose like course that was from or anything, but I remember hearing that and being like, that is so true. Like we never actually Mm -hmm. come to a space, like when you change your mindset around it, like we never do actually come to a space of like complete failure or like complete, like I wish Mm -hmm. I didn't like, you know, you don't have to regret anything you do because there's always either a lesson or it solidifies who you are. Yeah. 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 I love that so much. And, and that really, if I could say like like one way in which I lead my life, it's like I truly believe that every single thing that we do, it's either going to be an immediate blessing or it's going to be a lesson that has a blessing that comes a little bit later. Like every single mm-hmm. lesson and the failures and I feel like that was just 2023 was just like failing really hard and failing really fast and learning really fast lessons and then picking myself up again and moving and 
the most incredible year of of growth but truly the lessons then get to be your blessings the way in which you get to hold yourself and in the the life you get to live at some stage those lessons will come in very very handy in your in your back oh, pocket totally a hundred percent I completely agree with you like 2023 every single person that I've spoken to is like that year was like huge of just like um the thing that I've like recognized in a lot of clients has been like identity it's been like Mm. a year of like finding like a solid identity but like not an identity that you're being told you are or like not you know like learning that yeah in someone else's eyes your identity might still be like who you were five years ago but that that doesn't actually have to hinder who you want to step into Mm. um and like in myself as well, like huge year of identity and like yeah. lessons and like, huge. who the fuck am I? What the fuck am I doing here? Like, am I like, do I just like run away? Like, or do I just like keep facing this shit? Like it was like a huge year of that. And then stepping into the new year. And I'm like, this is like the first time I think I've ever felt like this in a new year. Cause usually I'm like very much like following like the lunar calendar, but I'm like, let's fucking go. Let's go. <laughs> Let's fucking go. Get me out the gate. I'm going rogue. I'm going rogue <laughs> as my solid self. <laughs> yeah, definitely themes of like identity and, and really this like internal growth uh, pattern. And, and on the other side of all internal growth is external growth. So like Queens, we're ready for 2024. But my, I go to kinesiology probably like just like when I need it. But like this year I was going like every like one to two months and mm-hmm. So often my kinesiologist would say, identities come up again. And I'm like, fuck, really? She's like, yeah, I know. It's just here again. I'm like, cool, great. And and something really cool that she reflected back to me was about identity, but in a way of like authentic expression is identity. Like the identity as to who we are isn't just like who we say we are and who we know ourselves to be like in our own mind, but the way in which we fully express ourselves has to be authentic for the identity to be an expression that actually makes sense yeah. and and so often I was like it kind of I was you know just like lying on the on the bed just when like my mind is whole blown but <laughs> so often we can think of identity and go like okay cool I know who I am I know my values cool Gucci off we go but having a really authentic expression as to who you actually are and how you lead your life and every single aspect that's like the next level of identity work and and making that that's the standard. And then that's how you become solid as your outworking of of your heart and who you are Mm. that people can see and that you can see in front of your own eyes, not just in your mind. Yeah. A hundred percent. I completely agree with you. And also I just want to add how good is kinesiology? (laughs) So fucking good. So good. Like fucking good. Honestly, if you're listening to this podcast episode and you're like, what the fuck is it? Just like, do yourself a favor look it up book in for like your local kinesiologist your life's gonna change it is so incredible (laughs) so incredible Um, yeah I've been going since I was like 13 or 14 and honestly, oh my gosh that's amazing um yeah like with that piece as well around like the identity and like all of that I feel like something that like I really have like come into over the past like probably year or so like probably actually I mean we're in 2024 so probably like just over a year is like shadow work but through I like do it through a menstrual cycle lens which like is a bit different but Mm. it's just like how I work with it and I feel like personally like if you don't understand your cycle you probably don't understand yourself and that's not something to be shameful about it's just like actually like if you don't know what phase of your cycle you're in and you only think that you have a period or, you know, whatever that might be, like you probably are suffering with a lot of like internal, like, um, you know, like almost arguing with yourself of like, I'm fine. Mm. I'm not fine. Or like I, a lot of like my clients I see do like the whole thing where like, they'll be like two weeks of the month. I'm like really good. And like, I get so much done and I'm really productive. And then the other two weeks I feel like I have bipolar and I don't know who the fuck I am and I don't know why the fuck I can't do this and like what's wrong with me and I'm just crying all the time and my boyfriend thinks I'm crazy and it's like that (laughs) there is just like I just personally think like if you know your cycle then you know yourself Mm. but then I also love to bring through like the shadow work piece of it so like each phase of our cycle I'm not going to go super deep into it because it's just like a whole thing but like basically each phase of our cycle is like related to like a different archetype and those archetypes have like a light and a shadow side to them just like anything does so like I'll use the follicular phase as an example which is the phase just after we start bleeding and that's related to the maiden archetype so a maiden 
her shadow side is like there's inner child healing to be done because a maiden is like you know, a young girl. So it's like in your follicular phase, like some people might be in that light frequency of like play and fun and like expression and feel really good in that and feel really safe in that versus someone else might have like, might still be stuck in some shit from childhood. And like in that Mm. follicular phase, like you're actually really struggling in that phase of your menstrual cycle. And you're like, you need to do some inner child healing. You do need some extra support. Like you might fucking just reject children and reject anyone who's having fun. Um, which again, like we can go deeper into that. And it's like, you're just projecting like how you're actually feeling within yourself. Right. But I think I just wanted to like give that tip of like, you know where to find me. Like if anyone wants to go deep with this, but like just even start with just knowing the phases of your cycle and this whole identity thing almost dissolves because you're like, oh my gosh, once you start tracking your cycle for a couple of months, it's like, okay, I'm not crazy. Like my hormones are actually like fluctuating and that's normal. And like, you know, there's work to do in this area and this area, but like, I can still just move through life and just like, I don't know. I feel like it's just so transformational. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah. absolutely. And I think it was really powerful what you said, like fluctuating hormones are normal. Like your, your hormones are actually meant to fluctuate. Like you're meant to have different levels of different hormones at different times during your cycle yeah that is normality you're not meant to be a fucking robot in the same all month like that is actually like that's not that's not health like that's not women yeah natural it's not like, sustainable for us and when women, the word, yeah when women say that um and please like access discernment as I'm saying this, because like everyone is different. We're not carbon copies mm. of each other. But like when women say like, oh, I just have like so much energy every single day of my cycle, I will put my last dollar that it's actually your nervous system is cooked and you actually have a lot of work to do. Um, It's just that you haven't allowed yourself yet to slow down and access that really low point that is to come if you like slow down. You know, like when people, mm. like, let me reframe that because that sounds really dark, but like, <laughs> you know, when people like work like all year and they like have a really high stress job and they're like working like 40, 50 hours a week, right? Christmas comes around or like their, their only holiday of the year comes around mm-hmm. instantly they have, well, these instantly days sick. they have COVID or like <laughs> they're sick yeah. or like they're, they're vomiting instantly. or like something's wrong. And it's like, people make a joke out of this and people are like, oh, it's just like, cause you work so hard. No, it's actually cause your nervous system is so cooked. You have chronic burnout. Your body actually doesn't know. It does not feel safe when your cortisol levels are dropping. So I mm. think that, and I know you would speak into this so much Courtney, cause you're like the queen of the yeah. nervous system. I'm like, since I've been following you, I'm like, yes, queen, like go off, like keep on sharing this awareness. But it's the same with the menstrual cycle. Like so many people be like, oh no, on my period, like I have so much energy, like I, I can still do all the things, like I'm fine. It's like, no, you're like actually in your hyper masculine and like your body doesn't even know, like, yeah, <laughs> it's mm. a whole, it's, it's a deep conversation. But like, like I said, access yeah. discernment because we are all car- not carbon copies of each other. And some people yeah. do have a lot more like energetic capacity than others. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think there's so much to be said around the work, like the people that say, like from a really integrated place, the people that say I have a lot of energy on my cycle, they probably do a lot of fucking work to to be able to be in that state from a very like, from a place of like, they've been intentional around supporting their nourishment, their movement, their health, their stress levels, their their nervous system. And that's probably why. And Yeah, and I love what you said about, like, being in a – because this is very, like, relatable to the life that I lived up to, like, three or four years ago, the state of, like, hypervigilance, the state of, like, oh, I'm never tired because I was always so overtired and so highly strung and so overworked and my nervous system was so fucking cooked. I could not even – I couldn't pick up my body's cues as to when I was starting to burn out because I would just crash and burn and, and like be on my, like, you know, <laughs> my last breath, but it's coming into this, the state of awareness and then acknowledgement and then support. It's like, okay, cool. When you actually allow yourself to slowing down, doesn't mean you have to fully stop. It's just becoming aware. It's just becoming more conscious and slowing down the wearing of your spiraling thoughts to a state as to which you can actually become aware of them and yeah. the same within your nervous system. Mm-hmm. Then to acknowledge those and go, oh, I'm actually really burnt out. Oh, I'm actually really dysregulated. Oh, I really feel a lot of shame in, in myself. Acknowledging these from that really, that place of allowing, that place of like deep connection and going, 
this gets to be okay. Cool. How can I support myself to move from this place? And and no shame needs to come up in that. If it does, fine. Use shame and use that. Like it's almost like using guilt as like a healthy motivator for you to be like, I didn't look after my body enough. Like I had this like vision. This is so funny, but like I was in Yin Yoga last year and I was like really like in a deep relaxed state. And I looked, I like heard my body say, like, you haven't looked after me enough. Like you mm. haven't regulated me enough. And I was yeah. like, in tears and yeah, as per but <laughs> being like wow actually like I've put the body through a lot of stress mm. like acknowledging that and then really supporting myself in that nervous system and like yeah that that is why it has to come from that it always has to come from that place of like deep learning yeah but totally you can't see anything if you don't allow yourself to see it and I know mm. it sounds fucking stupid and like really basic but it's so true you have to open your eyes to be able actually able to see you have to slow down to bring that awareness and your safety within your body to be able to see it yeah I completely agree and that didn't sound silly at all because it's like almost like when people are like oh I feel like I don't have any like I don't want to use time but like you know when people like I feel like I'm not creative I feel like I can't like my creative flow is just not there but it's like okay but do you even drive to the shop without a podcast playing like Mm. do you actually give yourself spaciousness in the pockets of time that you do have it to simply receive those messages from yourself for your creativity Mm. to be online. Like, you know, and that can some people, and and I also want to add like that your ego is not going to defend like what it isn't. So like, if you instantly like just heard me say that and you're just like, Oh, like, yes. Like I give myself time. It's like, okay, let's just go deep with that. Like, let's just actually say like, do you, like, do you, do you really like be honest? Like, do you? And it's like, it's fine. Like you don't have to shame yourself. Like I can really relate to you, Courtney in that, years ago like prior to me like getting onto like my path when I was like in my teenage years um I (laughs) it sounds ridiculous but like meditation would send me into a panic attack because I had never in my life felt safety in my rest and digest state I'd always been in like this you know hyper vigilant state always having to be on edge all the time like my entire childhood all the way up until I was like yeah the age of like about 18 years old that Mm. I would go into a panic attack and it's like there's that side of it too like we we do get like our nervous system does get so conditioned to just be so used to being in that like go 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 energy that like it might just feel really normal for you but like yeah myself too have like had to work through a lot there of like how weird is that when like people are telling you take a deep breath and you'll feel relaxed and then you start having a panic attack because your nervous system doesn't know what relaxation is like yeah like it can be like a really big journey but there's so much support out there and I also feel like the the support for like this work is just growing like so so much and I know when I stepped into like this work um like and I mean I'm only 24 like it wasn't like it was that fucking long ago but it's like even then it was very much like the only people you could really lean on were like spiritual gurus and it was like this weird kind of energy it was kind of like what what the fuck's happening like do I have to like wear hippie pants now to like heal my nervous system like what's going on where it's like Mm -hmm. that's fine because like I still wear hippie pants but it's like I feel like now there's a lot more like normalized ways or like more like chill ways to like you know work on this stuff without it feeling like you're like having a big spiritual awakening and you know because that can feel mm. really uncomfortable for some people when it's like you're working corporate and then you go to go see your like shaman healer it's like there's a bit more like <laughs> chill there now <laughs> yeah and, and a lot more I think it, even like additional to that there's a lot more acceptance of a corporate worker going to a shaman healer and like that actually being okay and I think yeah absolutely there is so much there is so much help out there like there's so many resources so many spaces so many coaches so like if you're looking for someone to help you on this journey like there is the right person for you like just just look like allow yourself to listen to podcasts like find your person find your person like because they do exist once you find your person honestly it's like your whole life opens up like you find the person that you trust to hold space for you to be vulnerable with people like and you say things that you've never said to anyone like would you find that person like yeah it's yeah, a, I, like it's like pivotal moments of life it honestly yeah. like brings me to tears like yeah. thinking about those people that have been that for me and just the growth in which I then allowed myself to enter into because I felt safe and supported yeah it's it's seriously like especially when you've 
you know, maybe had years of like not feeling safe to like actually be vulnerable. And it's like that first step of like, it's almost like you feel like you just want to throw up of like, oh my God, am I actually going to be seen in this? Am I actually going to like be honest? And like you do it and like someone holds that for you and like allows you to like expand. And yeah, I completely agree with you, Courtney. Like there is always like, there's more than one person out there for everyone. And it's like Mm -hmm. sometimes, and I've had my own iteration of this, don't you fucking worry of like there. And I'm sure you have too. I'm sure everyone has, Mm -hmm. but like fucking like just shitty, like coaches who like say their one thing and then you get behind the scenes and they don't know what they're talking about or like whatever it might be. Like there's always going to be that. But again, come back to the, I'm not failing. Like it's not like, I'm not like, don't shame yourself for choosing the wrong person. Just simply be like, what's the lesson to learn here? Okay. Next time, maybe I'll just Mm. like chill out in the like corners of this person's world for a little bit longer on that, you know, just like watch their Instagram a little bit longer. Um, Yeah. yeah, Suss them out, like full permission, like suss them out. No coach wants you to like coach or kinesiologist or like whatever it is. No one wants you to come into the space with like a real, like scattered energy of like, you know, shit, I'm fully committed to this thing, but I don't even know this person. Like get to know them, like actually suss them out watch all their free stuff, like listen to their podcast, ask them for a discovery call. Like you want to make sure that your move, when you are going into this work, like this is, this is deep work at a very like simple level. This is trauma work, right? Like this is rewiring, reframing, building safety and in past traumas and building neutrality and and living a, a good life. Like it's a very overview of like all coaching, like you want to live a good life from a place of like reframing, rewiring and, and shifting things within yourself. Yeah. You want to make sure that that person is safe. So like suss them out, like do the work. Don't have to put like so much pressure on it, but just you want to make sure that you'll move into that space. Your investment of your time, your energy and your money is like, is really, really grounded. Mm. And having that energy moving into a container is going to serve you so well, not only the coach to be able to hold that space for you, but yourself and your own growth and your own journey. Like that, that's the energy I want, I want to carry. I want you to carry yourself with, you know? Yeah. And I agree. Like, even if the person isn't offering discovery calls or they're not offering any free stuff, you know, whatever it might be, like, just ask them, like, if you really like their vibe Mm. and you're like, I think I want to work with this person, like, if they don't offer you a discovery call, then they're not your person because like you deserve that also as a person to have your process of like, can mm. we jump on a call and t- chat about this or like go back and forth in the DMs, whatever that might be. Um, But yeah, I just loved all of the things that you just said there because it's like, you know, it's actually important to find that safety. Um, And I think sometimes people also, which guilty from the past of like, you know, when you're coming from a space where your intention isn't so much to like empower yourself, it's more to like, oh, like, where's the answer? You know, like searching outside of you can jump around from people to people. It's like, don't shame yourself either. If you're in that, if you've been Mm. in that, if you're about to step into that, like it's all a part of the journey. Yeah. You need to do it. Like you actually need to do it. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think I feel when I really leaned into this work, I feel like the the first part was like throw shit at the wall, but like let yourself and then realize and bring awareness to, okay, when is my time to bring like tunnel vision into who I know is good for me and how can I align to that? How can I invest? How can I consume from a few different people? Because I, I I liken it to even, it just doesn't matter whether it's like coaching or whatever it is, like social media, relationships, conversations, like whatever. If you're, pulling energy from a lot of different places if you're consuming a lot of energy from a lot of different people a lot of different perspectives and this is my opinion it's like you're reading a hundred books every single day it's like you're reading you're consuming all of these things and while you can build your capacity to take on a lot more information and still move like yes absolutely there is a difference between going on your growth journey being in that vulnerable state and knowing actually these are my solid like people that I that I trust that I've done my research on like I've sussed them out I know them (laughs) and and this is who I want to learn from and again it doesn't mean that everything that they teach or guide or or whatever is like 100% right as well because you know we're not the same people yeah but just bringing awareness to like don't you'll get overwhelmed you'll suss out all the people but then don't let overwhelm be like 
the dominant state of your growth journey because like that's not the point the point is to have overwhelm and then to bring solidness and grounded to your action yeah and I want to add on what you just said because it just like pinged in my mind but like come back to the start of this episode how I like that weird little analogy dropped into my mind about the water (laughs) yeah Um, yeah and like if you have if you are also like investing in like a bunch of different coaches like which I did this um probably or probably more in Oh my god, I can't believe like 2022 isn't last year. But like anyway, Fucked. probably more in 2022, I was kind of like in about five different like coaches' worlds, you know, like doing like this person's like well, memberships weren't really a thing back then, but like, you know, this person's this and this but per- it clouds then your own belief because you don't mm. know what you fucking believe because you're constantly listening to a training from a coach who is 10 steps ahead of you where it's okay that they're 10 steps ahead of you, but sometimes you do just need to like be only investing in like the energetic one and the strategy one. So that then you can go, ah, like this is their perspective. This is their perspective, but this is my perspective. Like mm. and you can get that like really brown, d- dirty bowl of water from it. also investing in too many good yeah. things as well. <laughs> yeah. I just feel like I'm like this, the sixth sentence it's like, it's like landed in my brain. It was like, leave room for yourself. Like leave room for your own thoughts, your own beliefs, your own way of being. Yeah. Like what? Like that's the fucking point. The point is to come back to yourself and to leave room because this is the thing, like this, this journey of life, like in the people that we get to experience if we learn and, and all this stuff is amazing. But the number one <laughs> the number one teacher is life itself and like mm. you moving through life you experiencing you doing things you moving and actioning and that's how you're going to learn the most not because you talk to someone for an hour and then you get on with your life it's like yeah let you let life teach you as well yeah and leave room for that because yeah. if you spend 90 percent of your time in a training and like again season for that season for that immerse oh, okay. yourself like go fucking ham and it's the best but know when it's time to like learn from from life itself yeah. as well yeah and also like I think something that I really came into as well last year is like you can invest in less coaches but get like a higher quality I, I don't know we're, we're randomly just talking about like the coaching industry but anyway <laughs> um you can like do that but like you can re-watch those trainings like over and over and every fucking time you get a different frequency of that training and that's something I really learned mm-hmm. and that's almost like more of that like abundance mindset I find because it's like oh my god there's more there's more there's more and it's like it's not to say like every single time you rewatch the training you're like sitting down with your journal and like it's on like you know one time speed it's like no you can like watch it in two times speed while you're like cleaning the house the second time but like it's just about like listening mm-hmm. and like getting those chunks of um wisdom from it and just like allowing yourself to receive that and then taking that time in contemplation of like okay like they said this but like I don't really believe that okay you don't have to believe that like Mm. exactly what you said before like yeah yeah deeply experiencing like it it comes back to deeply experiencing whatever you are doing whether you're deeply experiencing life or you're deeply experiencing learning and being guided and being coached or mentored like whatever it is like let yourself be fully present in what you are doing yeah and like enjoy it and if you're not enjoying it and you're feeling all scattered then something needs to shift in your life that that's not you didn't come here not to enjoy your experience you Mm. came here to grow evolve and to enjoy life so if you're feeling scattered if you're feeling overwhelmed it's probably at that point where you're like okay cool something needs to change like what is that and like ask yourself go into contemplation self-inquire be like what feels really good for me what's still challenging me what's not what's expanding me and what's limiting me like there's so many very simple prompts that you can just sit with yourself and ask but at the end of the day and my word for 2024 is enjoy it's like at the end of the day am I I enjoying what I'm doing is it worth it Mm. I love that I love that and just coming back to that every single day like every single day like that's so that's so big yeah (laughs) it's so big it's so like it, it is so simple but it's so important like if we don't feel if we're not enjoying life and like of course life's hard and it's gonna be gnarly but there's still enjoyment that we can find in the way in which we allow ourselves to move or support ourselves or yeah 
bring things into our life like yeah and I used to think it was very a toxic positivity lens on that but I really came into this and like one of my clients reflected this back to me she's like you're just a very opportuni- opportunistic person like you yeah. take life as opportunities and again it, so it cycles back to that it's either the blessing now it's either like you you move and you go cool fucking a like let's go or you go okay cool that didn't work out the way I expected but I learned something and, and something a blessing will come later for me mm-hmm. very much in the energy but yeah. just allowing that whole process to exist yeah I agree though but like that quote of like it's always going to come to you if it's not now it, it's coming and I, I love that so much and I think that's like such a big takeaway like people listening should like fucking write that down <laughs> mm. if not yeah. now if it is like by core 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 belief is like to oh my gosh now I'm having a rhyme blank <laughs> my core belief is like everything works out for me in divine timing so mm. like everything gets to work out for me in divine timing. If it is meant for me, it will happen. If it's not, it won't. And like leading life that way, like with full, like, and this is to tap into a, a like spirituality, like leading your life from a full place of like everything that I put intention into, everything that I put energy into, where I spend my energy, energy flows back to me if I'm in alignment with my truth. Yeah. trusting that and trusting in divine timing and I literally have it fucking tattooed on my body trust divine timing because every single time you just surrender it happens yeah and yeah. never in the way that you even fucking think it will and it was always better yeah but always better it's, I agree <laughs> and it's one thing to say but it's another thing to actually allow yourself to let go to mm. release to surrender and spend your energy not fucking worrying about how the how and how it's going to work, but actually support yourself to do the, what's required of you. Like that's co-creation, that's manifestation. Like yeah, that's in a, in a one minute's rant. Like that is how it works. Yeah, a hundred percent. I love that so much. <laughs> yeah, so so, so good. <laughs> oh, this has been incredible. A whole almost like a whole hour has gone. Thank you so oh much for goodness, coming on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Whoa. but thank you so much. It's been incredible. I just appreciate your vulnerability about sharing a part of your journey and your expertise and, and, and everything. It's been incredible. And I'm very excited for, for everyone listening to hear this and really have like actionable steps to like take away and implement into the life and, and take some time. Like after this podcast, I feel like this is a really, this really like powerful a training. one. <laughs> This is literally literally (laughs) training. Like, take time. Like, pause this podcast. Don't let it go on to the next one. I want you to take this, like, take five minutes, like, sit, contemplate, like, anchor around journal, sit with, like, allow yourself to just process over, like, what came up for you and, like, what you want to shift into your life or what you observe that came up. Because I think that's the most – sometimes we can listen to a podcast and then just, like, fob it off, but – If there's any podcast to write notes, I'm like, it's this podcast for sure. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. That was like so, so good. And yeah, I loved coming on here. I can't wait to listen back to this once it's up. (laughs) Me too. Me too. Thanks so much. Hi, beautiful. Thank you so much for being a part of my podcast community. I have so much gratitude for you and I would love to hear what you think about this podcast. Leave me a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or share this episode with a close friend that needs to hear it. If you leave me a review and send me the screenshot on Instagram at sacred space W Tanika Lace, I will forward you access to a free guided womb healing breathwork journey and a 15% off code to purchase any masterclasses or courses available on my website. All you have to do is leave me a review, send me the screenshot on Instagram at sacred space W Tanika Lace, and I'll forward you access to the free guided womb journey and a 15% off code. I love you so much and I'll see you next week.